What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to do another Elite Code Challenge. This is called Available Ro Captures for Rook. So you're given an 8x8 chessboard and each of them has empty squares, white bishops, and black pawns. So they are given <clears throat> these characters, R for, R for, um, let's see, R dot B and P. Okay, so the uppercase characters represent white pieces, lowercase characters represent black pieces. So the R represents the Rook. The B represents the the uh, a bishop that's white, and then a, the P represents a pawn. Okay, a P represents a black pawn. The rook moves in the rules of chess, so it moves uh, horizontally or vertically. That's what this means. Until it reaches the edge of the board or captures an opposing piece by moving to the line it occupies. So rooks cannot move in the same square as other friendly bishops okay so the rooks can only move left to right and up and down and bishops can move diagonal so return the number of pawns that the rook can capture in one move so i'm gonna give you time to do this question and then i'll come back and i'll explain my solution right here okay so based on my solution this is what i did well first of all you need to keep track the number of pawns that we're returning and that's the number of pawns we're capturing so what I did first, I had to go through the whole board in order to find the rook because you need to find the position of the rook first before you could figure out the, the pawns it could capture around its space for horizontally and vertically. So once I find, I had to go through the whole board, once I find the rook, I set the position of the rook's row and column and then I break out of these four two four loops. So that's, that, would, that would stop the for loop once I find a, the rook. Once I find the rook, then I had to go through. Uh, this is going to go through. This is going to go through to the left side. Okay, so this is going to start at the row, and it's going to. Uh, the, the index is going to start at the current row that the rook is on, and it's going to keep going until it reaches zero. And this is basically in traverse left side. So basically, the zero represents the row over here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So this is going to go from 4 down to 0. So this is going to check all the left sides. Basically, I'm going to check if I've reached a bishop. Because if I reach a bishop, then I have to get out of the I have to get out of the board. That means I can't capture it. If, if there's a bishop interfering, my own bishop interfering, like in this case. If there's a bishop in this in the position that where I'm at, then I can't actually capture a pawn, even if there is a pawn that is at that location near me. If there's a bishop, then I have to break out and I can't capture the pawn. Now I have to check if there's a pawn that I'm going to capture to the left side. Remember, I'm going to the left, decrementing this way. If I see a pawn, I'm going to increase in my number of pawns and then I break out. <clears throat> the reason why I break out is because I can't capture two pawns at the same time based on this <clears throat> based on this example three as you can see here uh, in example three you cannot capture these two pawns on the left side you only could capture one pawn at a time so going through the left side there's only one pawn that they could capture so that's why you have to break out once you see one pawn then I have to go through the right side I have to check horizontally to the right side and check exactly the same way as I checked to the left side. Got to check if there's a bishop interfering. If there's my own bishop interfering with the whatever I'm checking, then I have to get out and break. That means I can't capture a pawn. Now, if I did, f now if it, what there's if there was no bishop in that location, then I have to check if there's a pawn, and then I increase the number of pawns, and then I break because I only could capture one pawn at a time, and that would get me one pawn on the right side in this case. Then I have to check through going upwards and downwards, and it's about exactly the same thing. Going upwards, I'm going to start at my column, and I'm going to keep going until I hit to the size, and that's going to go this way. And then I have to check going downwards, which is basically I have to keep going until I reach zero, starting at my column, so that's going to go this way. And I do the exact same thing for checking of uh, going upwards and downwards. You got to check if there's a if there's a bishop interfering, then you break. Otherwise, you have to check if there's a pawn. If there's a pawn, you got to increase the number of pawns and then break. And that's basically it. 
Once you have the number of pawns, you just return the number of pawns, and that's the solution for this. It's pretty basic. That's all you have to do. Yeah. Let me know what kind of solutions you guys thought of, and see if it's more efficient or not. Rate, comment, subscribe, or check.